Hello everybody, my name is Donovan and today I'm going to do a video on which camera gear I would select if I was restarting my career as a videographer. So please keep in mind I'm going to separate this into two categories. One's going to be more of a consumer level and the other's going to be more pro grade level. It's not going to be anything that's Hollywood style where you're going to have to take out a loan and sell a kidney to buy, but it's going to be a little bit higher end where you might have to put away a few dollars to buy. The other stuff is going to be a little bit expensive too. Obviously there's nothing that's $10 that you can buy to film on, unless if you use free stuff, like a lot of you might have cell phones, those do very good videography, but we're going to focus on some stuff that might be a couple hundred dollars, something like that, but still pretty affordable if you want to start freelancing and starting your business. Before we get into it, if you like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We just hit 370 subscribers until one of you left. That's right, I saw it. Please come back. Anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna focus on is some type of mounting system such as a tripod or a gimbal. So the cheaper end is gonna be a tripod. I really highly suggest you invest in a fluid head tripod because it gives you way smoother pans and tilts. They run about 150 to maybe $300 on the more expensive sides, but the ones that I purchase are about 150 to 180. I really suggest Manfrotto or Komen. I have Komen tripods and they work wonderful. And the best thing about it is if you've ever used power tools, such as DeWall or Milwaukee, they kind of all universally fit with batteries. So if you buy a similar system, like I have a COVID monopod and a tripod, the plates are very similar size. So once you mount your camera, you can slide it in and then say you need to switch to a monopod. If you invest in it later, you can then slide into it. But these are a great feature because you can't go wrong with a tripod. Super steady shots like this where you just get the subject, you can pan, tilt, and do all the things you need to do to get professional grade footage without holding your camera and getting shake and having to fix it in post. So a good solid tripod will last you a lifetime and is a great investment. So on the more professional side, I would suggest going with a gimbal. Gimbals are really nice because they give you the flexibility of movement, which is everything in videography. Tripods are good, but sometimes if you just do still shots and lock it down, it can always look like a photo if there's no movement. If you're shooting architecture and stuff, you could get nice pan-ins with a gimbal. I really suggest going Ronin. I know ZU cranes are also good, but I'm just a true and tried Ronin fan. I have the Ronin 2, so uh, I highly suggest checking those out. They are a bit more pricey, and the only downside I can see to them is if you're a beginner, it requires a lot of balance. It isn't as simple as just sliding a plate in and then going and filming your event. You have to slide, you have to balance the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis, but once you do that, it's a really good run and gun system, and most of them come with tripods on the bottom so you can just plop it down, get the still shot, pick it up, and run and gun. The next important thing that we're gonna talk about is audio. So for a beginner level thing, I would highly suggest getting some type of Zoom or Tascam system. They're basically a portable recorder that you can plug in an XLR or quarter inch input, which is what most mic systems use. So the benefit of these is you can plug it in, do kind of a podcast interview system, or if there's a DJ or live music you're recording, you can plug straight into their soundboard and get all the raw audio into your mixer. Bring it to your editing software, plug in the SD card, and then you're good to go. A more expensive, which I'm gonna use that term loosely, is a wireless lav system. DJI also does a very good job with this. I know Rode does a very good job with this. There's a lot of wireless microphones now that are Bluetooth that sync up to cameras such as this Osmo I'm using, or to your iPhone, to your new Bluetooth camera, all that stuff is super nice because with the task cam, the downside is you have to go and post match by either clapping to sync up the audio, or you have to find an audio cue in the music or in the vocals so you can sync it up and have proper um, lineup of the audio. With the new Bluetooth microphones, what the benefit is, is this microphone is actually mounted to my tripod I'm using right now, and it's live synced to my camera. So I literally just import this in, color correct it, and I upload it. I don't have to worry about audio, it's all magically synced, it's perfectly synced, because it's Bluetoothed into the camera. But what's nice about these new microphones too, is they work as standalone recorders. 
So say if you don't want to film a video and you want to do a podcast or an interview and you want to use your big professional camera and it might not have Bluetooth, you can straight up just record to the device and then you can plug it into your computer like an SD card and it will have all of the audio files. They run a little bit more expensive than task cams. Depending on what generation you get, you can get an older one for pretty cheap. I've seen them as cheap as $90, but uh, if you get the higher end ones with more inputs, if you have more audio, they could probably run you like five to 800, I'd say. But the mic systems, you can run around maybe two to, I'd say $500. It just depends on what brand you go with, but I really suggest checking them out. They're very good. And they even make the cheap ones for iPhones that plug straight into the bottom port. I've seen them for as cheap as $90 too. So if you're just starting out, that's a very good option. Another thing we're gonna focus on is lighting. I know a lot of people don't use it if they're just kind of doing a run and gun video like this for YouTube. But if you're doing professional work for clients, it is a necessity. I would highly suggest if you're starting out when I went to film school, some of our film teachers actually suggested this. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or any hardware store, even Walmart and some convenience stores might have them, they sell these metal clamp lamps. They're used for working in garages, stuff like that. You just take the clamp on it. It's almost like tongs. You can press them apart, clamp them on ceilings, on beams, on tripods, and you can buy any light bulb you want for them. So if you want colder light, for more color correction, or if you want warmer light for effect, you could buy hotter bulbs or colder bulbs, put them in there, it's a standard socket, and then you could just light with those. They're pretty cheap. I think they're about 10 bucks a pop. So if you have some money saved up, you can really do a lot of lighting, and they just plug into a standard light, so get some extension cords and some power strips, plug them in, get some cheap stands on Amazon or uh, at your local, uh, camera store and then you have a lighting rig. I've used them for some short films so they work pretty well. But if you wanna get professional, it's better to probably get something that you can color temp control. A lot of the lights are panels, they're just blocks that have a bunch of LEDs in them that you can color control. Some of them even give you like actual red RGB colors. So you can actually change it for effects like if you want a moody blue in the background or if you want it to be white or red or green or some of them like my lights uh the great video maker kit i believe it was a hundred some dollars i might be mistaken i'll tag it below so you can see but it actually has effects like cop lights paparazzi lightning bolts it has all this cool stuff that you could do for videos and i highly suggest investing in it this is by no means a top of the line kit, but I would say the Great Video Maker kit is more on the professional end, where the clamp lights are more on the beginner end, because the Great Video Maker kit will give you the lighting that you need in order to accomplish interviews and stuff like that. You can get way advanced with lights, such as like floodlights, fill lights, the giant $1,000 lights. Those are all awesome, but this is strictly just for the beginners, and people who want to invest more in nice gear, but don't necessarily want to spend thousands of dollars. So I know there's better light kits out there, but this kit does everything I needed to do and more. So if you're looking for a light kit, I highly suggest great video maker light kit. Finally, the big discussion of the video, your camera. Everybody's like, I need 8K, I need 16K, I need this Hollywood style Ronin, red Komodo, whatever. The truth is there's so many great cameras out there. A lot of people film in high quality 4K today, but what a lot of people don't know if they're not in the industry is I do some commercial work for the company I work for, and a lot of the stuff we shoot is 4K, but if you actually downsize the higher resolution stuff to say 1080, you actually get better image and better colors. So if you take a larger image and compress it down to a smaller form factor, you're just gonna get a way clearer image. So even though we shoot in 4K, we still produce stuff in 1080. Just like how the new cameras shoot 8K raw, 6K raw, Oftentimes you'll see a lot of people on YouTube or Facebook or social media, they'll say, oh, well, I just used the 4K oversampled from XYZ, 6K, 8K. That's because the 4K is really crisp and clean because it's taking that high image and compressing it into the thing. 
With that being said, the cameras I would focus on if you're a beginner are any type of camcorder. You can buy these cheap anywhere. You can buy them at Walmart, Amazon, Best Buy, any store that you could go into that has a camera sections gonna have a pretty reliable camcorder. And the best thing about these that people do not talk about is the fact that the batteries last forever. And you get very wide zooms where when you buy a more expensive DSLR like my Sony a7S II that I use, it has beautiful imaging, but the battery life, depending on what you shoot, can drain pretty fast and also just you're stuck with the lens that you have. So unless if you fork out a lot of money for a zoom lens, or if you get a very uh, telephoto lens and macro lens for close-ups and faraways, you're investing thousands of dollars. Whereas opposed to a camcorder, you get the wide, the telephoto, you get everything all in one thing. It's a very easy to use, typically um, switch to zoom in, zoom out. So you can get a lot from just a camcorder. If you're starting out freelancing and you don't know where to go, I highly suggest investing in multiple of those. For a wedding, it's so easy. You could just buy a couple tripods for cheap. They don't have to be Komen and Manfrotto, like I said. You can buy cheaper ones to start off. But if you buy three um, camcorders, they all take the same battery, so you can charge them up, buy some spare batteries online. You just plop them, you can zoom in for different angles, for different cuts, take it in your post, and you just basically have almost like a live stream cut of your event. I highly suggest those. They have camcorders all the way from a couple hundred bucks to thousands of dollars. I've used $4,000 camcorders, and yes, they're good, but at the end of the day, they all work the same, regardless if you want to admit it or not, they do. The downside is they don't have a lot of flexibility with stuff like ISO, f-stop, all that. It's typically like low, medium, high gain, and you're kind of stuck with that, and they aren't the best with low light. Now, the high-end stuff I would highly suggest are the DSLR mirrorless cameras, and if you can, go full frame, because the crop sensors are nice, but the thing with crop sensors, if you spend thousands of dollars on a lens or hundreds of dollars on a lens and you wanna shoot wide and just do kind of long stuff, say you buy a 24 millimeter lens, your crop sensor is gonna crop that in so you have more like a 28 or 30. So don't rob yourself of that. Get a full frame and save up for it. Right now, my eyes are set on the Canon R5 Mark II. I'm about, I'd say, 80% of the way saving for it. I should have it very soon, so once I get that, I will review it for you guys. That's the camera that I would go for if you're saving up a ton of money. It is a little bit more pricey at $4,200 for the body before tax, but there are plenty of great options. Canon has stuff like the R8. Sony has stuff like the vlog cameras, like the ZV-10s. Panasonic has stuff, the Lumixes, the GH5s. There's hundreds of possibilities. Nikon even has amazing cameras coming out. I know the cheaper one, I think it's the Z6 III. That one's really good. It has a lot of videographer reviews and does a lot of cool stuff. So if you're buying cheap, I would suggest going with a camcorder setup. You can build up your revenue if you're freelancing for corporate events, weddings, if you're doing uh, client things for commercials, social media things, you can get a lot done with that. But if you're gonna shoot more cinematic and take it more seriously, I would wait, get a nice DSLR camera. You cannot go wrong with it. The shots on them are just amazing. And the good thing about those is once you buy one, they can last for years. I've been using my Sony a7S II for almost 10 years now. All you really need to buy after you get such a high quality camera like that is lenses. You can invest in lenses and a cheaper way to invest in lenses on the cost of autofocus, which I know a lot of people just love being able to plop, shoot, not worry about focus for quality and quickness, which in that way I'd say go camcorder because mostly everything's a focus. But if you want to have a more affordable, there are cheaper cinema lenses that you could buy that have wider apertures for more cinematic stuff on the cost of you have to manually focus. There are high-end ones that are thousands of dollars. You can stay away from those, but there are kits where you can buy some lenses for a couple hundred bucks a pop. So that is all the gear that I would buy if I was restarting my videography career over again as a professional or as a beginner. 
If you like this video, again, please subscribe, comment, like, and share, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you and have a wonderful day.